Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out The Count Lucanor. This was released... Two days ago? Yeah, today's Thursday. By the time you see this, it'll be two days ago. So yeah, this was released two days ago on the PlayStation Store. I was waiting for code to come in, but it never came. So I apologize that this video was out later than I wanted it to be. But yeah, this is kind of odd. Fun fact, that girl in the middle is actually a guy. Yeah, all the art of this game is so weird. It makes him look like a girl every single time that he comes up on screen. And it's a little odd, but yeah. Basically, it's kind of like a... I came in expecting something along the lines of a Zelda-style game, but it's not even close. It's more comparable to Amnesia than it is Zelda, but... Well, we'll get into it and you can see what I mean. So... Not that much to see in the options menu, but it's a really weird menu to navigate because you have to go up and down between these two left and right options. And then, for some reason, if you press down on the right sound arrow, the cursor just disappears entirely. I don't know why, but it just does. Here's all your controls. Very simple stuff. Nothing you need to worry about too much. So, we'll just hop straight into the game, shall we? This is about an hour or so in, but it might be a little bit less than that because the game's crashed on me twice and it doesn't autosave. So, if that doesn't give you a general idea of how the port of this game is, I don't know what. It might be my Vita. I can't be 100% sure, but it might be my Vita's memory card because I think my Vita's memory card's actually gone and about had it, but I'm pretty sure that the game's performance isn't exactly something that would be affected by the, the by the memory card that it's running off of. So, yeah, this is the Count Lucanor. The general idea is that you're a little boy who's run away from home and the entire game is just horrendously dark. I mean, look at that on the right there. That's a bit silly. We can actually go and talk to this guy. But the general idea is you're this little boy who's run away from home and you are basically inside this mansion where there's horrific goats and bloody spell weavers and shit everywhere, trying to figure out the name of this weird little blue demon teeth bat thing that followed, that you followed, I should say. And by doing, to do that, you need to figure out its name by going through every room in this weird ass castle and getting all the letters and then using a little puzzle to figure out what the order of the letters are in order to figure out the thing's name in the first place. So, as I said, I'm about an hour in, but there's a... Oh dear. As I said, I'm about an hour in, but there's a lot of things that I've already done. There's a bunch of stuff that you can get by being friendly at the beginning of the game. I'd recommend being friendly to everyone because it does you a lot of favours. But the general idea is that you can go into some rooms using some coloured keys, and you get more keys the longer you get into the game. I've got three out of four keys already and I actually went and looked this game up on how long to be and the game takes about two and a half hours roughly at least according to how long to be which wasn't very accurate because it had a not that many times when it shows up as red on the website it means that they don't have that many times to verify just how long the game really is. But nevertheless, I've been playing for about an hour and I feel like I'm getting fairly close to the end. So I felt like that I should do the right thing and come on through the game and and come, come and show the game before I actually get to the ending. Because otherwise this wouldn't really be first impressions. And I can't guarantee the game's going to run stable forever and I don't look forward to losing more time. But anyway, the general idea is this. It's kind of a horror game. You don't have any way to defend yourself. So you just kind of need to wander around these halls... Hoping you don't run into any issues in terms of things like enemies and stuff that you might run into. And there are a couple of different kinds of enemies, but there's nothing particularly over the top or hard to avoid. It's not like if you run into something, you're not going to be able to get away from damage. If you die in this game, as I said before, there's no auto save. You save manually by giving up a coin at the fountain in the middle that we started at. So you need to save pretty regularly if you want to stand a chance. There are some levels that do recommend you just immediately go back and... Oh, Jesus Christ. There are some levels that recommend you do immediately go back and... My brain's not working very well right now. They do recommend you immediately go back and spend some coins. So, 
yeah, do that if the game tells you to, but thankfully it doesn't tell you to do that very often. So, okay, I think I know what chest is going to be the real one. I'm just going to wait for him to get as far away from this blade chest as possible. So, yeah, you don't have anything to attack back with, and you're... Oh, God. Well, that fucking sucked, didn't it? All right. Well, I'm going to have to hit continue and go into a different puzzle room, aren't I? Because Jesus fucking Christ, that was kind of unfair. So, yeah. Generally, you've got no way to attack, so you just have to run for it. There are things you can do, like hiding underneath desks and basically just running for it. The game also does recommend you put down plenty of these candles. However, the game's also got this weird positional audio system. And honestly, it doesn't work very well. What it, what it wants you to do is it wants you to put down candles where you think enemies might be when you walk into a room. But there's really no need to do this. And I'm not entirely sure why the game insists on you doing this because generally you can see far enough away anyway. But just for the purpose of demonstration, when I'm not being sucked in by this Eldritch Beast, I'll put down a candle to show you what that's like. Your other inventory items are very simple. You'll either get items that'll help you out with some kind of puzzle which is usually very simple, like a ladder to get up a broken ladder, a bridge of wood to get across a small gap, nothing that's particularly lacking in obviousness. Oh, there's this guy again. And I'm dead again. Okay, that guy hasn't actually managed to kill me before, so I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with him now. Right, let's give this another shot. Let's find another room to go wander around in. There are actually enemies you can run around, um, you can run into here. What I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to save up 10 coins, and if I was smart, I'd go and I'd get the three coins I just got. But yeah, that, uh, uh, the general idea is you're wandering around these puzzle rooms trying to figure out what to do with the items that you have on hand, and it's very simple. I haven't noticed very much in the way of complicated puzzle design basically at all, but I'm... I'm usually not even that good at puzzle games, so for these puzzles to be simple, they need to be really simple in my point of view. From my perspective, I should say. So, yeah, the general idea, you gotta... What? Uh... Right, hang on, I can actually hit star, go to my inventory, and... Eat a cheese wheel! Eat a cheese wheel! There we go. And... Go back to equipping the candles, because I can't sit bloody see without them. Oh! Right. Wait, what? Oh, great! They're probably fucking invisible, aren't they? I don't actually have my sound turned on right now, so I can't hear what they're doing, and the sound does actually make a pretty big difference, because the positional sound makes it so that you'll actively hear stuff coming out of the left or right speaker. Obviously, this would work great if you were wearing headphones, but... When you aren't wearing headphones, and you're stuck with this, um... Jesus, fuck, what am I getting hit by? When you're stuck with listening to it on speakers, you are not in the best posi- What the hell? Okay. Hang on, I'm just gonna eat some bread so I don't immediately die again. Uh, as I was saying, the... General idea, yeah, uh, with the presidential sound is that it sounds okay, if you're wearing headphones, but if you're playing on the speakers, it's going to sound absolutely terrible. Not helped by the fact that the game's soundtrack is kind of screechy and really annoying, even at the best of times. Because some of the... it's very retro-inspired, like massively retro-inspired. So you do end up in this annoying position where there are some really loud and really jarring... Um... Where there are some really loud and really, really jarring soundtrack pieces. Like, the intro tune, specifically, holds a really loud and there should be some mechanism to make the visible the invisible. Interesting. I wonder if that would actually work with that, but I probably can't. Anyway. Huh. Right. So now what happens if I swap to this? Will it actually let me... No, there is some mechanism to make the visi invisible visible. Okay. So, I take it it's those levers. Right, well, I'm just going to take my opportunity and leave, because you would not believe what you can do with that apple. You, you have no idea. 
It's so stupid, which I'm actually going to show it off on camera now, but yeah. The positional audio just doesn't sound very good at coming out of the speakers. That's what I'm trying to say. And the soundtrack just holds, like, really loud and annoying notes, which gives me an earache. That's what I'm trying to say. Right, so... Hello, Mr. Donkey. I actually have to equip this, don't I? Hello, Mr. Donkey. Here you go. The donkey literally poops gold. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> it seems so unnecessary in the grand scheme, but... Alright, that'll be enough health to get me by. Yeah, now that I've got 10 coins, I can equip them, walk up to that key there, and buy it, and then we can see what's in the top floor's rooms. Let's go do that. Also, there's probably an enemy right through this doorway. Told ya! Really annoying to have to deal with that, but yeah. I'll give the game some credit though, it's done a really good job with its atmosphere. This entire whole castle thing that's going on, the creepy enemies, the fucking goats that walk on their hind legs, the general sounds of it when it's not blaring retro tunes at you, all of that stuff is actually pretty good and they've done a pretty good job with it. And I accidentally went back downstairs again. The only real downside to the atmosphere of the game that I can tell, other than the retro pixel style, pixel style being a bit generic, but I'll let it off the hook for that one, because they've done a decent enough job with it, and it's pretty clearly not... It's pretty clearly not, like, unoriginal. But... The... Just the general problem I have with it is that... Right, I'm getting thrown out, aren't I? Thankfully it didn't kill me. But yeah, the general problem with it is that you walk way too fucking slowly. Like seriously, your walk speed in this game is horrendous. And I get it's kind of on purpose to try and hammer in the horror themes of it a little bit more here and there, but... Lucrezia, okay. Yeah, I, I get that it's meant to be a sort of, like, you know, horror staple that you move slowly and you can't really react. But this place is, like, bigger than it needs to be and it takes ages to get anywhere. And I feel like that if they cut down on the walking a bit, it'd make things a lot more easier to deal with. I know, like, think of a game like Zelda. Sure, it has huge worlds, but you still move along in those in a, in a pretty good clip. So it makes you feel like that... You are actually getting somewhere, even if you're not covering that much distance. In this game, you are covering basically no distance in an absolutely huge world, and it drives me insane. Just because of, you know, how many times you have to bloody reload the game as well when you get killed by a few things, it's... Yeah, it's just kind of hard to deal with, honestly. And one of my other major problems with the game is that... Well, the port is not very good. It is very likely to start dropping frames and being sluggish to control just out of nowhere for no discernible reason. But especially early on, before you actually get into the castle, it is very likely to... It is very likely to fuck up and be... It's very likely to fuck up and slow down very early on in the game when the areas are quite big and it makes it very sluggish and as, as I said before the game's crashed twice on me in an hour and that's with a freshly formatted memory card although this memory card might be on the way out I don't know why I don't uh, if this, this if this memory card is so bad that I can't write something to the first like 200 megs of it because this game is like 200 meg then yeah sure my fault not the game but the performance issues are still there I wonder if I'm actually able to, like, run and hide in here somewhere. Alright. Chances are, if I go in there and again, I'm probably gonna fucking die, so I'm not even going to try. So... How do I feel about it overall, really? Well, it's just... I've already been in that puzzle room. No point in going back in again. It's just... 
It's a bit too minimalistic for my taste, I think is my main thought about it. It just is it's particularly easy and it doesn't take advantage of the horror stuff that often outside of the bloody eldritch, eldritch beast it's got wandering around over there and a couple of other things like the ghosts that walk on their hind legs and stuff it's just surprisingly how do i put it it's surprisingly simple for such a cool concept i feel like you could have done a hell of a lot more with this game but for whatever reason they just decided not to and it's not boring, but it's not as engaging as I would have hoped, especially with the simplicity of some of the puzzles. I mean, sure, I'm having a lot of trouble dealing with this right now, but it's still surprisingly just... I don't want to call it unengaging because it's really not, but it, it just doesn't really do that much for me, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Which is unfortunate. Like, I like the idea of leaving these candles around, but it's pretty much useless. I like the idea of having to choose whether or not you'll help people, but really there's no reason not to. Because they'll give you free items later on, which are way more valuable than the things you gave up in the first place. I didn't even know this at the time, and it kind of rubbed me the wrong way once I found out. Right, there's what's-his-face. He actually does know I'm here, but I don't think he, I, he can hurt me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he can hurt me while I'm under the table, but... Not like I want to take that chance right now. I probably should have gone and saved once I got the apple for the donkey to shit gold. Yeah, that was a weird one. Uh... Why does the donkey shit gold? It feels like the start to a bad joke. Yeah, you know, normally I'd be able to lead him away from there, but I'm guessing that chest he's standing in front of is the chest that I need to unlock. So... This makes things particularly interesting. Is it line of sight? Like, you do see this guy once once before this point. And he doesn't actually try to attack you at that point, which is really odd. Right, I'm guessing one of these chests has to be the real chest. It wasn't the one that he was in front of, but... The question is, which one is it? Because there has to be a letter in here. At least I think they're supposed to be. There it is. Right, now I need to just fucking bail. But I've caught his attention, which is going to make it really hard. There it is. That's the doorway. Let's just get out of here before I get hurt. Also, yeah, that's a little bit disappointing horror-wise, considering that you can just bail out. And not have anything come after you. Uh, how many letters do I have right now? Four, five, six, seven. Hmm, I could go get one more. I just wonder if I'm actually capable of doing it. But yeah, the majority of the game is like really simple puzzles like that. Like, one level is literally just a maze you walk through. That's literally all you do. You just walk through this little maze. And the letters at the end. It's It, it really is that simple. Oh, fuck me. There he is. Although, if I remember correctly, I can't actually unlock this one for some reason. See, there's, it's locked and there's no way to open it. I'm not entirely sure why that is. I can't even see myself. But I'm not entirely sure how you're meant to open this one. Just grab that. So I've got light again. It looks like it's line of sight. I'm guessing that picture up the top there. You see that picture just above the thing? I'm guessing that has something to do with whatever the method is to open this up. Right, I forgot. You can't get in that way because of the boxes.
It really does feel like I'm getting close to the end. Like... Yep, here we go. This is where I die. I should probably... Eat some... No, that's not how you eat. That's how you eat. Now, where's my torches? I should probably bail the hell out. So I can figure out what I'm meant to do. But I mean, I, that, that's really it. Like, there's only like one other room that isn't a red room that I haven't explored yet. There is also a, um, what the? Could have sworn I actually put that candle down there. Oh, those candles. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to let um, lead me on some sort of... Oh, it's the thief. The writing isn't also particularly great. It's a bit weird. Also, there's a few noticeable typos here and there. It's a little odd. Okay, apparently I'm supposed to come back to her once we're done here. There is one other room I can go to, but I'd rather go save first. Also, it appears the donkey's gone, so I can't feed him the apple to make him shit out gold, which is... surprisingly disappointing. I will give it credit for having a bunch of interesting, just like, weird dudes, like the headless guy with the goats and all that, but... They don't really develop into characters all of them own. In fact, that little man-headed pig going on over there is a more interesting character. And he doesn't show up for a while. It's a bit odd. Alright, let's go see if we can, um... Oh. Right. There, that green room. That'll have to be our salvation. See if we can find the eighth, the eighth letter. Although, if I remember correctly, this is the fire room. I am indeed correct. Let's give this a shot. I fucked this up the last time I came in here, so don't expect much. You can also see that the port is actually having a really hard time with this one. It just... It loses so much of its frame rate, it's kind of unbelievable. Yeah, I fucked that up. I'll give it one more try. I saved my soul right there, so I know where I need to go to try and get this one, but... Yeah. I don't really know what else to tell you. It's just... It's got a bunch of unique ideas, and I don't mind what it's trying to do. But I feel like it could be so much more if it committed to, like, being a puzzle game or being a horror game. You know, pick one or the other and try and focus on it, because I feel like they could do fine with one or the other. But this weird combination that doesn't really want to seem to commit either way is just quite unfortunate. I'll put it that way. Should probably just eat a little, just to be safe. That only hurt me a little. I'm fine with that. Yep, those things literally do follow you around like that, because they are dicks. Wait, wait a minute, what room is this? Oh, it's this fucking room. Yeah, I've already been here. This 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 entire puzzle is literally a soaker ban room. Like, you can't see everything, but you can see some of the crates. You can see that lever, and you press that lever to unlock that bridge over there, which isn't there normally, and you get the letter. That is literally how simple the first couple of puzzles in this game are. So I guess I have to give this another shot. So what's in here? If the game will actually let me, like, pick this up. Ow! No, it looks like I can't even get into this crate. What the hell? Okay, that, that's not something that's supposed to happen. At least, 
Not under the usual set of circumstances. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to happen. One more try. Oh, and the last item over there is just a bunch of food. Nothing particularly over the top. Wait until you see the bloody fire trap they expect you to go through. It's oddly hard for this kind of game. Yep, I get it, JF. Thank you very much for the warning, but I do not think I will be needing it. So yeah, this bit here is a little ridiculous. Because I'm not entirely sure what pattern they expect you to follow. Because once you get up here... This... This is kind of retarded. I'm guessing I have to work my way around the outside and that'll help me find a way to beat the ever-loving bejesus out of this fire, but I have been wrong before. Okay, you burn yourself out so I can push this through here. Where does this lead me? What? Hi. Alright. You want cheese? I should still have some. Here. Okay. Alright, so yeah, that's just helping me out later on, I suppose. Wouldn't be surprised if there was a multiple ending to this game or two. And we're back out here. Right. I was wondering where that was eventually going to lead. Let's go back through and see if we can get that letter. Assumedly there's something in the top right corner which might be able to help me out. Either that or that ring. The ring is supposed to show off something that's fake, so... If there's any fake fire, which is one of the weirdest things I've ever said in my life, maybe this ring will help me find it. Apparently not. I'm waiting for those to go out. What's this? Oh, right. We actually have to... extinguish the fire with some water, but... God knows where any water is in this place. <laughs> Cheese right fucking there. Okay, thanks, game. Right. Well, we've been here for about half an hour already, and I think that's enough considering how long this game actually is. So, I will just get my way out of this room... Which might be harder than it looks, thanks to the fact the game's got a surprisingly difficult to deal with puzzle right here. Nah, no, I bought it. As expected, alright. That was a look at the Count Lucanor. It's this weird blend of puzzle solving and horror stuff, and I feel like that it doesn't commit to either one well enough, and it just... It doesn't really hit home on either of them. It's got some neat ideas, but it just can't bring them to... Can't bring them to full term, we'll say. And the port is not very good. So I would say if you're going to play this game anywhere, don't play it on Vita. Play it somewhere else. I think there's a Switch version out that might hopefully be better on the performance and not crash as much. But yeah, I, I got basically nothing else. So 
This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.